guys, I wanted to go over this study. I'm looking here in John chapter 14, and I'm going over uh, the Comforter, and I just I want to I want to put this online so I can have access to it, uh, or if anybody comes across it. But we're going to look here in John 14, and we're going to start in verse 5, and we're going to notice that Thomas says unto him, "Lord, we know not where you're going, and how can we know the way?" You know, he's like, "Lord, we don't know where you're going. We don't know the way." Notice what Jesus says to him. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So we see here that Jesus, the true, the real Son of God, he is the only way to get to the Father. There's no other way. Okay? It's in him. Okay, he is our ride. He is our ticket. He is the only way. And he's the truth. And he is the life. Okay. Verse 7. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. It's because the father, it's because Jesus is just like his father. Okay, they have the same spirit. It's the spirit of God. God gave to his son his spirit. And then Jesus, in turn, gives it to all of us. This is how it's done. It's the mind. So God's mind is in his son. You see what I'm saying? There's two individuals, but it's all one spirit. It's the spirit of God. So... God the Father, if we know Jesus and the way Jesus, his character and how he acts and the words that he, everything he's been taught, his Father teaches him and then he teaches us what his Father has taught him. Okay, so if we know Jesus, we know the Father because Jesus is teaching us about the Father. It all, everything comes from God the Father. Oh, I can't wait to meet him. It's going to be amazing, man. So let's continue. Philip says unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it will suffice us. He's not getting it, <laughs> which a lot of people don't. I didn't get it for a long time. And Jesus said to him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou, then show us the Father? You see what I'm saying? Jesus, the Son of God, you guys, is just like his Father. The same character, the same nature, the same peace, joy, love, patience, kindness. He's just like his Father. So if we, if we, if we know the Son and we see the Son, it's just like seeing the Father. It's incredible, you know, the same character. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? It's because they have the same spirit, the mind. The mind of the Father is in the Son. It's incredible, you guys. And it's the same mind, the mind of Christ, that is trying that he's trying to give to us, that the angels are trying to bring to us, that God sends. And the Father, okay, so now it says... The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the works. You see, Jesus, everything that Jesus spoke, okay, was taught to him by his Father, and then he tells us those things. So none of it is of himself, it's all from his Father. It's beautiful. And we know that God the Father is not literally in Jesus. He's not physically. You know, it's his spirit is in his son. It's incredible. Let's look at verse 11. It says, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. <laughs> then he says, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. 
And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. I love studying this. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's all about obeying God. We got to obey. If we're obeying the Son of God, we're obeying the Father. So, now notice this, you guys. Here's the key verse that causes a lot of confusion. And I, it took me a long time to understand that. But when it hit me, when God gave me that revelation, when he gave it to his son, his son gave it to the angels, and then the angels brought that understanding to my mind through the Spirit of Christ. You guys, it blew me away. Because notice this, it says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever now this another comforter you guys Jesus is talking about himself in the third person the third person the grammatical third person because he's not here physically but he is here spiritually present everywhere by his spirit the angels bring the spirit, of, from my understanding that I've seen so far, is the angels. God sends it to his son, his son. And let me show you. If we look here in Revelation 1 1, John received this revelation, but it says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him. So his father gave it to him because his father has all foreknowledge, he knows all things. Okay. To show his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So the father gave it to the son. And then what does the son do? And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So you guys see how that works? God gave it to Christ. Christ then gave, gave this revelation to the angels and signified it. Put it in symbols and signs. And then the angel brought it down here to John. And then John wrote it in a book for us to, to read and study. It's amazing. So if we go back here, if we look at this is why in John 151, it says, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Now why... Now, why do you think they're uh, ascending and descending? They're going back and forth from heaven to earth, heaven to earth. Why do you think that is? It's because they're bringing, from, from what I can tell so far, that they're the ones that are bringing the Spirit of Christ to all of us so that it can be in us and teach us. Oh, it's incredible. But that's what they're doing. They're coming down, they're bringing it, and then they're going back up. And then God the Father will give a commandment, give it to His Son, his son then gives it to the angels, and then the angels bring it back to bring it down to us. And then when that's done, they go back up. So they keep going up and down, up and down. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. Because Galatians four six, because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of His Son into your hearts. Now, God, he's sending the spirit of his son, you guys, into our hearts. From what I can tell, it's the angels that are bringing it to us. Oh, it's incredible, man. <laughs> I've had angels in me writing things. It's nuts. I didn't know what it was at first. <laughs> oh, I mean, they're all around us, you guys. The angels, they are so, such a huge part of this ministry. Uh, where we were talking about the, the comforter, and I want to make I want to John gives us a huge clue here. Now let's read verse sixteen. It says, "He shall give you another comforter, that he, so we know it, it's a personal being, may abide with you forever." We know it's not God the Holy Ghost or a third being that that's in the Godhead. Okay, 
the Jesus right here, he's talking about himself in the third person. It's incredible. Because physically, he's in heaven. But spiritually, he is all around us. The angels are bringing it to all of us, you guys, that want it. And bringing that light and understanding to our minds so we can study and be guided into all truth. But I want to show you that word for comforter because the another comforter is alos parakletos. And I want you guys to see John uses that word for comforter. He uses it. You're going to see here. He uses it five times. And only John uses this word. And it, he does something the last time he uses it to give us a huge clue who this another comforter is. And remember this to you guys, Jesus talks about himself in the third person a lot. Like when he's talking about when the Son of Man comes. Now he does this a lot because it's a clue for us to know that, that it's him. He is the another comforter. It's his spirit. Let's look here. I love this because I want to. We're going to look at all five times. So it's used once in that verse, and then it's used in John 14 26. It says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, that it's, it's the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the real Son of God. You guys, the Spirit of Truth, that, that, that's who it is. So there's only two divine beings that stand watch over the entire universe. It's the Father and His only Son, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. You guys see that? It's His, it's his mind. You guys, it's incredible how, how it can be. To, it can go out to all of us at the same time. It's amazing. Let's look. John 15, 26. John uses it for the third time, and he says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me it's because it is him <laughs> it's incredible man it is so incredible man and all things proceed forth all life you guys proceeds forth from the father and then from the lamb out to all of us and all the angels we're gonna the fourth time it's in 16 7 let's read this it says nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come. Will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Think about this, you guys. If Jesus stayed here on the earth, he would physically be here. So he could not be everywhere at once. Okay? But because he went back to heaven to his father at Pentecost, okay, his spirit was poured out to the whole earth. Anybody who wants it, it's, it's all around us. It's the spirit of Jesus. The angels are bringing it to us, okay? <laughs> oh, man, it's incredible. But that's why he said it. He goes, if I go not away, the comforter will not come. Because if, because if he didn't leave, then the Father, could, he wouldn't be up in heaven and be able to send his spirit back down to the earth. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so simple when, once, you, when, once God brings you that understanding. Well, we know God gives it to his son, his son gives it to the angels, and then the angels bring it down to us. Oh, man, it's uh, the last time is the biggest clue to who this another comforter is. Look in 1 John 2, 1. He uses a different word this one time to show us who it is. It says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. And who is that advocate? Who is that another comforter? It's Jesus Christ 
the righteous. That word advocate is, is, is the word John uses for comforter. We have a, a comforter with the Father. It's Jesus Christ the righteous. This stuff blew me away when I first learned it. The Holy Ghost has taught me this, has been teaching me all these things. About, about, it's been teaching me all things about the scriptures. I've never experienced anything like it. So the comforter is the advocate. And we know the advocate, there's only one mediator between God and men. That's the man Christ Jesus. It's his spirit, you guys, his mind, his life, his identity. It's sent to all of us into our hearts so that we can be born again. It's incredible. So this is stuff that I'm studying so I can learn this stuff because I'm trying to, I want to teach anybody that wants to know about it. But I got to go through the whole thing myself. So anyways, that's it, you guys. I just wanted to, there's so much more to talk about, but I just wanted to show you, because look in Ephesians 2.18. We already know that Christ is the way to the Father. He's the only way to get to God. Okay? For through Him, we both have access by one Spirit to the Father. Only by one Spirit do we have access to God, the Father. And who is that Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? The Comforter, the Advocate, our Mediator. You guys, it is none other that spirit is Jesus Christ. It's incredible. It's the spirit of God. Oh, man. I love it. So the Holy Spirit, you guys, it's not some third being in the Godhead. God, the Holy Ghost. That, that's not who it is. It's the spirit of God. And the comforter that we receive, it, you guys, it's the spirit of Christ. So I hope, I hope that helped. I just wanted to... I'm studying this stuff, and I want to get as many videos backed up online as I can. So, well, God bless you guys. Let's keep studying, and I'll see you guys soon.